Greetings to all. Today we will together study the Word of God with the message of the glad tidings of God in Christ. Let us together look at Romans 5, 1 to 11. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Our Heavenly Father, we come to your word this morning, and we pray that you, Holy Spirit, will shine in your hearts so that we will understand the truth in your word. Father, apply your word in our lives. Help us to receive the blessing that you have reserved for us in the Lord Jesus Christ, the blessing that the Lord Jesus has paid the price with his own body to redeem us. Lord, please be with us at this time so that my words and the meditations of our heart together will be pleasing to you. Help us, Lord. Give us your power and your love so that we can live according to your word, to be faithful disciples of yours, Lord, to walk with you each day so that we will live in the fellowship delightful in you. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. This passage um, reveals to us the good tidings of God in Christ. And this passage speaks about three points that we rejoice in. First of all, we rejoice in hope to be glorified to uh, be glorified with Christ to receive God's glory we rejoice in hope let us look at verse 1 and 2 therefore since we have been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ and praise the Lord and verse 2 through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God this is the gospel of joy. We stand firm in God's grace and in salvation. And what? We have joy. We rejoice with the hope that we will be glorified with God, with Christ. We, um, we are proud of this and rejoice in it because we will be glorified with Christ. We will be, partake of his glory. 
the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ is what, and the glory that we have in Him is what we are desiring. That is our, the peak of our desires. In this life, we are not worth much, but before God, we are His children, and we are His heirs, heirs with Christ Jesus. We need to be like Jesus Christ in our care, in His character, in His nature, and we will be filled with His uh, love and righteousness, and then we will be reigning with Him. Actually, right now, we are sitting at the right hand of God with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the glory that the Lord has for us. The hope to have be glorified with Christ causes us to rejoice. If you are promised something, something great, let's say that someone promised to give me a million dollars, I'd probably be happy, right? But this is even greater than that um, many times fold greater than that that is to be glorified with Christ not only with Christ but we have the glory of Christ in us we will not have that joy if we have not been reconciled with God we are not reconciled with God if we have not been considered righteous before God. And we are not righteous before God if we have not placed our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and to rely on the death and His sacrifice for us. And we cannot have the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ if the grace of the Lord has not come to us. He has given to us the Lord Jesus Christ to come to this earth to die for us and to resurrect and to give us His righteousness. There is a great exchange right here. We have given to the Lord our sins, and He takes our sins, and He died on the cross for us, and He resurrected, and now He gives us His righteousness so that all God's righteousness, all the beauty in the Lord, all the goodness of Him comes into us. And so when God the Father looks at us, and He sees the complete righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ in us, and He considers us righteous, it's not that we are not of no sin, but we are righteous before God. We have the right standing, the right standing before God. We rejoice and delight because in the future, when our Lord Jesus returns, we will be like the Lord Jesus Christ and we will enjoy the glory that is His because we have been reconciled with Christ, with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. That is verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord and us have been reconciled. He no longer condemns us. He no longer accuses us of our sins, but He considers us as His children. And we are at peace in our relationship with God, and we no longer have to be afraid that He will be angry at us. Are there any here who are bearing the guilt of sin? You see that you are so evil. You know what? God loves you. While you were sinners, He sent His Son to die for you. We have fellowship, harmony with God because we have been reconciled with Him. We and we receive His grace. Praise the Lord that the peace, the complete peace of God is revealed in the word shalom in the Jews, in the Jew, in, in the Jewish language. Shalom. Shalom is may there be peace and um, just relaxation and rest in your soul. So when we come to the Lord God, we have complete peace in all circumstances, in all aspects of life, in our heart, in our soul, in our life, in our jobs, in all aspects of life. We have peace. And this shalom encompasses also the salvation that God will bring upon His people in the end days. To be reconciled with God gives us a peaceful heart, right? We are at peace at God's side. It's like a little child who's carried by his mom in her arms. There's just at peace and safety. Same thing, we are in God's arms. We enter into God's um, uh, atmosphere of 
peace of, that the Lord gives to us and we praise the Lord for that because we are standing in that place we are standing in God's grace and we stand firm in his grace the condition of grace is the standard by which God considers us righteous we maybe bear the guilt of sin we see that we are evil we see that we are not worthy of God but it is not what we do it is because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. He has taken us upon himself our sins so that he considers the sinner to be righteous because he is righteous. Because why? Jesus died and paid the price for us. And we praise the Lord for that great love. The condition of grace is to receive God's love and grace. This is the privilege. This is the privilege that God has given to us that he loves us and he receives us it's not that we are worthy of it but because of what the Lord Jesus has done for us we enter into God's grace we enter into the presence of the God Lord God because God joyfully gave to us what is grace grace is love given to those who are not worthy of it that is grace we have God's grace we are loved by God we are not worthy of his love yet we, we, he loves us that is grace we show forth and uh, and are proud of it and and because we are in God's grace here the word says that we rejoice in hope of the glory of God in verse 2 we rejoice in hope of the glory of God English is rejoice that is we are so joyful that we want to speak out and declare and we are so delighted to speak forth and praise the Lord for his love reserved for us we stand firm and we are stand in the hope of sharing the glory of God that the glory the glory is only belongs to God no, no one can take the glory of God if we compete against the glory of God then we will die in our sin it's like Adam and Eve because they want to take the glory of God therefore they sinned against God and they wanted to eat the fruit to be wise as God but when we, they ate they died but here we are not competing against the glory of God and we don't take his glory from him but here he gives us his glory and God gives us the hope of the glory of God therefore we rejoice we rejoice in the glory of God we hope to share in the image of God and in all the spiritual heavenly characters of God this is ref reflected through us who are God's children. It's like the sun shining to us and the glory of God shining to us and then we reflect that glory. So we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God in the future, but as we walk towards that glory, we have to go through many tribulations, many trials and sufferings. And But that doesn't take away our joy. In contrast, suffering is the reason more so why we should rejoice we rejoice in suffering isn't that interesting that we rejoice in the hope of glory but also we rejoice in suffering in verse 3 to 5 not only that but we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us we are those who are seeking joy we live for joy we live for happiness and we can only find that joy in the Lord Jesus alone and we find that joy even in the midst of sufferings this is something that is so interesting and compelling appalling in the Christian faith those who follow Christ they are proud when they are facing sufferings we are proud when we are going through tough times why why is it that when you are going through tough times you speak of it or, or uh, 
Because why? Because it leads to perseverance and hope. And if there is no suffering, there will not be maturity. The verse says it very clearly. We rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. We will mature when we go through the sufferings in life. And all of us here, we all have to go through sufferings. Don't think that God will depart from us, uh, leave us, or that we will not, we will lose out in God's blessings when you are going through sufferings. For it is the path that leads to glory. This is the foundation, the basis for our being proud in us. We are proud or we will show forth that we rejoice in our sufferings. The apostles, the disciples were rejoicing because they suffered for Christ. When they were uh, imprisoned by the high priests, and the Sanhedrins and whatever, and they were beaten, and they were uh, forbid not to speak of Jesus Christ, then they left the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. Not something? They were being beaten. Our brothers and sisters of the whole world, they are being persecuted because of their faith, but in them there is joy. In their suffering, they rejoice. Even Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ suffered because of the glory ahead of him that he faced his, his chin towards um, Jerusalem, that he was willing, rejoiced to suffer on the cross. There are children, there are parents who rejoice to suffer to feed their children. I know of this mother who was willing to die that she would go, It was so they were hungry, and she would go and pick off the uh, trees, and if she died, she died, but she was willing to do it because she wanted to feed her children. So she was willing to suffer for that. And then there's another mother. Um, she had to climb up on the top uh, and put um, coals or something like that. I don't know. She had to throw the coals into something to sell in order to have food for her children. Why is that? Because of the sacrificial joy. Because we know that we have at the end of the road, that is the end for us. It's the glory of God. And so we rejoice in suffering. The Lord Jesus Christ rejoice in suffering for us. And we who are seeking for joy, we also rejoice in suffering. The Apostle Peter was rejoicing as he went through suffering. In 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10, I'm sorry, this is talking about Paul. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, that is the glory. A thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Yes, to rejoice, to rejoice in weakness and to boast in your weakness so that the power of Christ may be. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. To rejoice in suffering. And the passage that we we studying today gives us four reasons why we should rejoice in suffering. First of all, because suffering produces steadfastness. That is our steadfastness, our perseverance. It's like a, a tree that is planted on the in the high peak of the mountain. On the top of the mountain, there's lots of wind, strong winds, and it will shake back and forth, but it will not fall down because it gets stronger and stronger because of the force of the winds that hits it. So when they... Uh, 
have the uh, they are building the sail for sailboats. They go up all the way up on top of the mountain to find the the wood that is strong enough in order to go down to make the sail for the sailboat. Why? Because it is that kind of wood that can take the wind. So when the Lord allows us to go through the sufferings in life, it's because so that we can be persevere or steadfast. James 1, 2 to 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. Count it all joy, my brothers. I don't know if you've gone through sufferings. There are those who are going through difficult times with their jobs. There's no customers, you're doing layoffs, and your health is suffering, and you had to wear that mask, and there's not enough oxygen for you to breathe. Those are the trials. Or you teach your children, and they don't obey you. Or in your jobs, there are those who are just against you. Those are all different trials, but because of faith that other people are laughing at you and mocking you. But you know what? See all those trials that come to you as counted for joy, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Praise the Lord. That is the road that leads towards maturity. It's through the sufferings that we have to bear. We need to bear the sufferings in joy and rejoicing, not because of greed. There are some people who are very grateful. Uh, I'm sorry, not greed, but uh, complaints, complaining. There are many people who just complain and complain. But no, we should not complain. When we have the suffering, we know that that's the road that leads to glory. And it helps us to grow, to mature, to persevere, to stead be steadfast, lacking in nothing, to be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing, because of the difficulties, sufferings that the Lord brings into our life. And suffering will produce character in us. It produces character so that the Lord will accept us and say, yes, that child has the character that pleases me. When the Lord uses sufferings to create to us, to build in us character, or the word that people see say today, is character nowadays before God. It has been trained, it has been molded so that we don't give up, we continue and persevere, and that builds character. Whether people uh, criticizes us or speaks badly about us, it does not matter. Continue to go in the ministry, the, the calling that God has called us to do. Though we save, w though we face any difficulties or hardships, and the Lord will be uh, received by us, God will receive us because it is a proven character that God is pleased with. And then suffering produces hope. We see that suffering lets us see that this life is just very temporary all that we have to face. So we are hoping to be with the Lord so that we will no longer have to face sin. We no longer have to face the weaknesses in us. We don't have to face the devil with the temptations of this world so that we will be free in the Lord and will be glorified with Him. That The suffering reminds us that this world is not our home, but heaven is our home. And so that um, we will not be disappointed because we have the Lord Jesus Christ who has gone through the sufferings and has gone to glory and he says follow the road of suffering that leads to glory. Maybe we are, can endure suffering for two reasons. First of all, it's because suffering is just very temporary. It doesn't last forever. The Word of God in First Peter 5.10, And after you have suffered a little while, 
the God of all grace, who has called you to His eternal glory in Christ, will Himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Praise the Lord, that we are only suffering for a very short time. Then, afterwards, we will enjoy the eternal glory with Christ in Christ, and we suffer not because we do bad deeds or evil deeds, but because we stand before the Lord as a righteous person. The Lord says in Matthew 5, 10 to 12, Blessed are those who are persecuted. What does it mean to be blessed? Blessed is, I rejoice for you, for when you are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. And then he continued, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So we rejoice when we suffer for Christ. The result of suffering for the gospel is the eternal glory. In 2 Corinthians 4, 17 to 18, for this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. I praise the Lord for that. So if our brothers and sisters are going through sufferings, rejoice, because suffering is the road that leads to glory. And the hope of glory causes us to rejoice. Suffering also brings us joy. But the thing that causes us to rejoice the most, what is that? That is we rejoice in God. Jesus paid the price for us in his salvation plan and that is the good news that is good news good news is a good news is what is that good news that is God paid the price in the Lord Jesus Christ so that we can receive the blessing in him Jesus Christ paid the price so that you and I can be blessed and what is that Christ that was paid. In Romans 5, 6 to 8, for while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one would scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How many of us here are sinners? All of us are sinners. So, Jesus died for who? Jesus died for us. The price that he has to pay. Jesus Christ died for the ungodly. Jesus Christ died for us. The price that God had to pay was the Lord Jesus Christ because of us. Jesus Christ sacrificed his life to bring for us what? To bring what blessings to us that Jesus Christ has to die. The one and only Son of God had to pay the price. What is that? What is that blessing? In verse 9, Since therefore we have now been justified by His blood, much more shall we be saved by Him from the wrath of God. For if we, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by His life. And more than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. In verse 9, speaks of the blessing that the Lord gives to us. That is, we are justified. We are considered righteous, just, because our sins have been taken up, carried by Christ. All has been forgiven, and now we take on the Lord Jesus Christ, and now we are justified. He considers us as a just righteous person and not more than that because of that justification we have been saved from the wrath of God we don't have to go to hell we have been saved from hell and go to heaven we're no longer under the wrath of God and praise the Lord for that
But is that the greatest blessing, the best blessing that the Lord Jesus Christ has for us to enjoy? Is it the greatest blessing that we hear here? Just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and when you believe in Jesus Christ, your sins will be forgiven, your soul will be saved, you will be go to heaven. We've heard that, right? Is that the greatest blessing that our sins are forgiven, our soul is saved, and that we will go to heaven? Is it the greatest blessing that we rely on the blood of Jesus Christ to be considered justified and to be saved from the wrath of God? No, because if we continue to read more than that, for if while we were enemies, for while wait more than that, we also rejoice in God. Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by His life. Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by His life. Now, that is the greatest blessing: is that we rejoice in God. In verse 11, more than that, we also rejoice in God. Rejoice in God. That is the greatest blessing. God paid the price so that we can have God. He paid the price so that we can have fellowship with Him. He paid the price so that we can be by His side, so that we can enjoy Him, to enjoy His great character, and we can enjoy His greatness. That we rejoice in. We rejoice in God. He is our joy. We probably can rejoice in material things or in our success, but the greatest joy that we have is we rejoice in our loved ones, right? If we lose, we have everything, we lose our loved ones, we're sad, right? But if we lose everything, we have our loved ones, we rejoice. Here, the Lord knows that we have lost fellowship with Him, connection with Him when we sinned, but now He opened a way for us to return so that we can enjoy fellowship with Him. God is our joy. While we say that glory is our joy, suffering is our joy, but the greatest joy is God. That is the great news. That is the good news that we know. This good news is the good news. It is the gospel of Christ that Jesus Christ died for us so that we can return to God and be reconciled to God to live with Him, to have Him. The joy in God, in the Lord, is paid by the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ so that we can enjoy. And if we don't go and enjoy God, then what a waste of God's, of Jesus' effort. If we just come to the Lord so that the Lord will help us in this life, that we will have peace, so that we will escape hell and go to heaven, then it's not worth the effort that Jesus Christ has done. But Jesus Christ paid the price so that we can return to God, to have God, to be reconciled to God. The Lord Jesus Christ died so that we can be forgiven our sins, right? So that we will be justified, yes? Yes. So that we can be reconciled to God and no longer be under the wrath of God? Yes, hallelujah, right? So that we will escape the eternal hell, right? Yes, we rejoice in that so that we can go to heaven and enjoy the life with the Lord. What great glory, right? But above all, so that we can enjoy God in the in the beautiful, intimate relationship that we have with God and in His glory. That is what the Lord has for us. Good news is the good news that the Lord Jesus Christ, in Him, He paid the price through suffering so that we can enjoy Him forever. The Lord God paid the price by His Son so that we can enjoy the greatest thing. I chew this over and over again. It's so important. I hope that you will hold on to this truth. That is the grace that the Lord has given to us, that He has given Himself to us so that we can enjoy Him. In other words, God, through Jesus Christ, has paid the price for us. Jesus is the price that he has paid so that God in Christ is the price and the pride of the gospel. 
In the Lord Jesus Christ, God gave us Himself. He is our reward. God is the greatest blessing that He wants to bring to us. So, why do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Some people simply just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ so that they will escape hell and go to heaven. There are those who come to the Lord so that he, they will have healing, so that they will have uh, plentifulness, uh, not suf suffer, or that they will uh, be successful in life. So some people come to church and say, I want to go follow Christ, uh, Jesus, because I want the Lord Jesus to help me in my life. And then in the end, that person leaves the Lord. And and they say, with my two hands, I can create everything. I can have everything in life because of my two hands. No, we don't come to the Lord for those things. We come to the Lord to have Him. You may lose everything. You may have everything, but not have the Lord Jesus. There are those who come to the Lord just to have Him. He is the greatest blessing. He is the greatest joy and the greatest pride for us. As the song says, though people compete in this world, all I have is Jesus, and that is enough for me. We rejoice because of the hope of the glory of God, that we will enjoy the glory of God. Secondly, we rejoice in suffering because that is the path that leads to the glory. And thirdly, we rejoice because God is our joy. He is our reward. In conclusion, I would like to borrow the words of John Piper to lead to our conclusion today. This is what he says. Have full and final joy in God alone. Hallelujah. As revealed with final authority in Scripture alone, the gospel is the good news that by faith alone, through grace alone, on the basis of Christ alone, by faith alone, not by our good works. Through grace alone, that is the love of God for the sinner. On the basis of Christ alone, that is Jesus Christ is the only basis for, to bring us salvation. For the glory of God alone, that forever and ever we will glorify in Him. Sinners have full and final joy in God alone. That is, we, God is our all in all so that we enjoy Him, we live in joy in Him because God is our joy. May the Lord help us, each one of us, to experience this so that in, amongst all people, we are the most joyful people. And each day we will seek the Lord so that our hearts will be joyful. And from that joy that is overflowing in us, that we will bring that joy to others. From the joy that flows forth from us, that we proclaim the gospel of Christ to all peoples. When we have that joy, God is our joy, and we rejoice in Him. There is no other joy greater than the joy in God. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us all types of joys in our life. We have our loved ones. We have our mother, our father, our brothers, sisters. We have our wife, our husband, our children. Those are our joy in our lives, Lord. But the greatest joy that we have is that we have you in our life, for you are everything for us, Lord. For when we have you, we have everything. And we are hoping on the day when you return or when we leave this life that we will enjoy the glory with you, Lord. But though we through, go through the sufferings in this life, our hearts are full with joy, Lord, also, because you are our joy. Lord, we thank you because you are so good and because you are faithful and you are loving, full of mercy. 
Lord, we are see that we are not worthy of anything, but we come and enjoy the goodness of yours, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your power that caused us from those who have died to be risen again, those who are sinners to be your children, from slaves to sin to the devil and to the desires of this world, to the greed fullness of this life, to become free people in you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Help us to rejoice in you and to enjoy you each day of our lives, Lord, from now into eternity.